Hey everybody, welcome back to another Create tutorial. Today we're going to continue talking about the wide gamut color selector. So if you go to settings, dockers, and all the way down to the bottom, you can open that up. I am not going to compare it to the advanced color selector anymore because we've kind of seen enough already in the first video about that. So we're going to continue on with a bunch of other settings that I didn't go over last time. So to bring up those settings, we're gonna click on these icon or the lines here, go to configure. We're gonna go to general, and we're gonna go to color selection or selection color space. So right now it is layer mask. If you click on that, we have image and custom. So what this is doing is changing the color space here, but not changing it for your actual canvas setting. So if I hit cancel, go to image and properties. My color space is RGB at 8 bit. Hit cancel. Go back to our settings for the color selector. I can go ahead and say, all right, so the color space is the same as the layer or the mask that exists in, in my scene. I can go to the image, so whatever color space exists in the image itself, which is this file, or I can go to custom. And I can say that the color selector is going to be a specific color space that's different from my file setup. So we can do the CMYK at 32 bit and we can hit OK. That changes the view of your color selector completely. So what it's doing is it's showing you the color ranges available and um, the hue and the, the lightness and all that good stuff. So if I bring this over to the brightest point on the bottom here between the blue and the green, I can see other color ranges with that. If I bring this to the yellow, or the brightest point for the yellow, I can kind of have like that sort of similar color selector to which is um, this here, where it shows the darkest point, the lightest point, and the color for saturation. And as I move this, I can still see like kind of a general idea of other colors within that hue or value or saturation. Now, because this is CMYK there's still limited options and what I can do for some of these colors. So for example, I'm not going to get a wide range of purple. You can see it's not very, um, there's just not a lot of options and that's normal. It's CMYK. There's color restrictions on what you can and cannot use. So if I go to a more bluish purple, I can brighten this up, but it's just, there's just not a lot of color range because it's a CMYK and CMYK is meant for printing. So if you're printing things and you really need this to be super accurate, you're going to want to use this. So I'm going to go back to configure, back to general. And we're going to just pick one of these. Um, we'll do grayscale. Let's see that. All right. So you can see that this is just a color bar. You can see my advanced color selector. I can still paint with colors here make this bigger. So I can still pick colors, even though this selector here is totally different. This is just telling me that, yes, if I wanted to, I can pick some colors to use within this range, even though this is not a grayscale document. And that can be helpful if you just want to be like, okay, I just want to quickly look at some grays and stuff and not have to be stuck with this color wheel without changing the color space of the whole file. So let's try the LA the lab. So here we've got something a little different. You can see here there's a little bit of banding. It's showing basically the color range that we have available for this option. And we'll do the same for XYZ and OK. Same thing. Ooh, this is very bright on the eyes. <laughs> showing something similar. And the last the YBCR. So this is pretty interesting overall, depending on the color space um, that you need to, to paint with or illustrate with or whatever it is without going and changing the overall image properties, which is very nice because maybe, I don't know, maybe you just want to have a version just for printing, but you don't want to actually change the settings if you want to go post online or do something else with it, you know, or you just want to do some color testing and compare it to RGB colors that you picked up before. 
All right, and proof colors to painting color space. Um, that's just making sure that if you have these two selected, that it's keeping um, the colors that you have to the color space that you've chosen here. I'm gonna go back to layer mask because I don't need that on. All right, and now we're gonna go to the pop-up tab. So we did not go over this last time, but if you look at this, there's some things that we did go over in the color patches section that's very similar to this here. So this color patches is talking about this row right here and only this row. You can change the size and say how many you want and change the, or, or the scrolling and how it appears every time you pick a new color. And if you want it on the vertical or if you want it horizontal. So what this is affecting is not the Docker itself. I'm actually gonna reset this to default so we can see what it does. If you're, I'm gonna close this. If we're painting, we're like, all right, sounds good. Maybe you're on mobile or maybe you don't. You have um, the maximum big workspace setting here that we have with, where is it? Or the big paint or big vector and everything is just basically gone except a few dockers and you want to bring the wide gamut docker back in only when you want it to show up. So the hotkey for that is shift O and you can see here, this is my selector, right? So right now there isn't too much going on because we haven't really changed any of the settings. But you can see, we can go ahead and change the color. It looks like we can, no. And if we go back to the actual Docker itself and change those settings, configure, pop up, we can start changing some of this here too. So that was a pretty decent sized pop up. But if it's not big enough, hmm. I believe 500 is the maximum that you can make this. Hit OK. Go to Shift O. That's a huge docker, or a huge uh, little pop-up here. It's bigger than the pop-up palette. But maybe you need it that big for whatever reason. Or, let's go back to pop-up. We are going to do one row, long orientation, and width is good. We're gonna actually make this really small. And hit OK. So I'm just gonna add some colors here. I'm actually gonna erase some of this as well so we have more space to add some more color. Okay, hit Shift O. That's a very, very tiny color selector. And of course, when you move your mouse away from it, it disappears automatically. So just be careful about that because if you're like me and you're quick to move your mouse away, yeah, it can be a little frustrating. I don't really know what these little arrows are on the bottom. I think that's just kind of like, hey, this is the pop-up. It's not the real deal. Um, Cause it doesn't let me select it. And I didn't see anything in the documentation about it. So you can make that really small if you want. That's really small for me and I it would just not serve a purpose. So we're actually gonna make this, uh, I think the 300, we're gonna make it 400. Come on. I don't know why it doesn't want to let me type. Hit OK. Shift O. There we go. It's, it is very sensitive, I found. So just be mindful, like if you need to use it, don't move your mouse away. <laughs> All right, so to look at the hotkeys for the Y gamut color selector, we're gonna go to settings, configure Krita, and we're gonna go to keyboard shortcuts, and that's what this is here. The WG stands for the wide gamut color selector actions. So if we select that, we have a ton of options here that are not keyed that you can customize to your heart's desire. So the shift O is showing the wide gamut color selector. If we wanna show just the, the shade selector, which are these four bars here, we can do that. We can show the color history only, um, the my paint shade selector, the hue counterclockwise, just a ton of options if you just wanna see specific things at specific times. So it's like you took the whole selector docker and you just divided it up into hotkeys. Um, I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, there's a lot of customize customizability, is that a word here? Depending on what you're doing. Uh, this is a pretty impressive update. And this is not like, oh yeah, we just made a docker. No, it's, this is massive. <laughs> um, I'm 
at this time, I don't have a need to customize every single one of these. Now, if you do want to change the hotkey, you can do custom and any of your keyboard inputs here. So if I hit J, here, there we go. I click on it, hit J. It'll give you a warning if it's assigned to something else already. So I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm just gonna leave it at the default and cancel that. But you can add your own custom hotkeys. Usually I'll do like control I or, or control I, control one, two, three, and four, things like that, that usually aren't taken up already by Krita. So it might take a little bit to find which works for you and your workflow and what kind of setup you have. All right, so we're gonna go back to the configure and we're gonna look at the shade selector. So like I said with the, sh the hotkeys, these bars are your shade selectors. So we can have as many, I think there's a limit to how many you can have, but I'm gonna add 10 because I can. So that's cool. I now have 10 of these. So <laughs> the first four are, I believe the hue, then we have the saturation and then we have the value. And then everything else down here, I don't know. You can change it here. So let's say you're, um, you need a certain value. We'll just say, let's put, f come on. All right, for some reason, Creed doesn't want me to let me type. We're going to do a range of, I think that's fine. These are pretty warm colors. So let's say we're doing a sunset. We want to keep that. And we want to keep the saturation as high as possible. And we're going to keep the value at zero. Hit OK. So now, we're going to go here. We can see that when we're in the red range, that range of color that we just picked for the hue is staying. So even if I change the color, it's giving me a set value to always reference. So this, I mean, I don't know, to be honest, who needs that many shade selectors, but I don't know. Maybe you're doing something crazy and you need that many. You can also change the line height. So we're just going to do 20. So that's, so you can do 20 of these. This is just actually really cool that I can change the range. So I'm all right, I'm gonna do some sunset colors here. These are actually really nice colors. Okay, so right clicking on the shade selector for some reason isn't working for me. I don't know, let's see here. When you right click on this, it's supposed to update in the color wheel and with your selection, it doesn't seem to be doing that. That may be a bug. Um, I did notice in the last video as well, this wasn't working. So it may not be completely perfect, but that's okay. I am very confident that they'll fix that. All right, so the color changes externally. I totally wasn't paying attention to what this was doing. So I have this checked on. You can see all of these shade selectors are actually changing their color. If I have this checked off, I hit OK, it is no longer updating these shade selectors down here. It's keeping it to the last color I froze it as, basically. So if you need to put that back on, hit OK, I had to reset my default or my settings. Um, maybe you, you always need this to be red, but you just need to pick a couple extra colors for something. You can kind of freeze that and leave it be. Or you can just add more of these bars and freeze it there. <laughs> you can also change them to be color patches, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna leave it there. Look at that. It's very neat. Looks like bricks. Okay, so this is supposed to, so the shade selector interaction ends. It's supposed to be when you go through and you pick one of these colors in the uh, shade selector, that it's not really supposed to update anything until you're done interacting with it. But it doesn't seem to be any different. Oops. Either way. Could be that I don't have enough of a color range to test that with. I'm not entirely sure. I'm just gonna leave that off because it, turning it on didn't seem to change anything. All right, and I believe that's it for the wide gamut color selector. We went over everything in each um, tab. So this was a pretty heavy update. Um, I did say in the last video as well, this will be the default going 
um, at, at some point with Krita. I don't know if that's going to be with it. Um, and then 5.2 or 5.3, how they're going to handle that. But this is a really awesome addition and I'm actually really excited and I will be changing this to my default at some point very soon. I just need to get used to it because it is a massive <laughs> change in how you use it compared to the advanced color selector where I was literally just like, all right, pick colors for me, I'm done, you know. So once I get more used to this and I have a workflow for what I do, in mind and set up then it will go here and the advanced color selector will never be seen again all right so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed learning about the new color selector that creative 5.2 put out and you're able to use it in your workflow definitely recommend it even though there were a couple settings um, between this video and the last that didn't quite work as expected for me um, if you have any issues yourself, let me know in the comments below or if you notice I wasn't doing something properly or it was doing what it was supposed to do and I just didn't notice, let me know as well because this is a pretty intensive docker and I definitely missed a few things during testing originally that it took a while for me to realize what was happening. Um, yeah, so let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial and I, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.